The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining today's webinar, Automatic Efficiency, Streamlining Data Processes in an Era of Regulation. My name is Greg Richards, Director of Marketing for EnableSoft and moderator for today's event. Just a few in-house keeping points before we begin. All attendees are in listen-only mode, but you can type any questions you have into the chat box on your screen. We'll answer as many of these as we can at the end of the event. Any unanswered questions will be addressed within 24 hours of the webinar's close. And now without further delay, let's introduce today's topic, Automatic Efficiency, Streamlining Data Processes in an Era of Regulation. So we'll hear from three people today. Ivy Boyer from Care First. She'll speak a bit later about her case study. Of course, myself, Greg Richards with EnableSoft, and Justin Calhoun, Director of Sales Support, also with EnableSoft. Today's agenda, we plan to have you out of here in 30 minutes, but first we're going to tell you a bit about who we are. We're going to introduce the reason we're all here today, data automation technology, and we'll explain what that is. Ivy's going to walk through her case study at Care First, and then we're going to wrap it up with some questions. So who is EnableSoft? Who are we? Well, EnableSoft is really all about what's possible today. We're an innovator in productivity and efficiency software solutions. It's going to be Foxtrot One, which we're going to introduce here in just a few minutes. We're a partner to nearly, to nearly 500 organizations, including some of the largest payers and plans in the U.S. And we've been part of the Orlando, Florida community for about 18 years. So what is Foxtrot One, the software that I've mentioned? Foxtrot One is software, true enough, but it works like a digital employee. We say that because Foxtrot One intelligently performs unstructured manual tasks in all cores, in all systems. It's business and IT friendly, which means there's no programming ever. Anybody can use Foxtrot One. And it's got drag and drop functionality, which works through the presentation layer. What that means to you is that all of your business rules uh, and all of your security remain in place when you use Foxtrot One. So this is Foxtrot One. Again, it automates data-related tasks in and between your core systems, just like a digital, uh, just like an employee might. That's why we call it a digital employee. Enters and, enters and changes data just like you would, but much, much faster and much more accurately. And again, it works in the presentation layer. So security and business rules always remain intact. So what else does Foxtrot One do? Well, we really say that Foxtrot One can automate anything you do with a mouse and a keyboard, but when we talk specifically about the activities that our Foxtrot One digital employees do, we're really talking about data entry, data maintenance, and data integration. Data entry, that's things like entering provider info, creating accounts, updating employee benefits. Data maintenance can be anything from ICD-10 updates to claims adjudication done automatically. Data integration, again, integrating disparate platforms, so there really is no limit to uh, the types of activities, the type of, types of data-related tasks that can be automated with Foxtrot One uh, very quickly and easily and often at a significant uh, cost. Of Historically, there have really been just a few ways to go about doing these things. You can, of course, do them manually, which plenty of organizations do now, but that's time consuming. Uh, an alternative is if you have the resources and the know-how in your IT department, you can write a custom program to automate many of these different programs, or you can get perhaps a macro, or you can outsource this work to a third party or a consultant. Um, the challenge with the latter, of course, is that that's a very expensive proposition, especially if you're dealing with large amounts of data. Or you can get Foxtrot. And Foxtrot One is ready when you are, 100% accurate every time, no manual data entry or programming, as we'll see when, when Ivy uh, shares her story means you get home on time, no working nights, no working weekends. Foxtrot One replaces macros, programming, and other manual unstructured processes at every level of your organization. So we've talked a bit about Ivy, so let's, let's uh, hear from her. This is Ivy Boyer. Uh, Ivy is the manager of business application systems with Care First. Ivy's been working in healthcare since 1990. She was a consultant first with Care First and now an employee of Care First since 2007. So without further delay, take it away, Ivy. Thanks, Greg. Um, as Greg mentioned, I'm 
the uh, manager of business application systems, and part of the things that are included in my job description are trying to find existing applications that will improve our performance and help us meet our business needs. CareFirst as a health plan started in 2003 when we won the bid for Access, which is the state Medicaid program, and have, have averaged between 50, 55,000 membership uh, since that time. Um, we currently gained some additional membership in Pima County, it, uh, which gave us an additional county, and virtually overnight we went from uh, you know, 50,000 plus members to 65, 70,000, and we've been scrambling to try and come up with good solutions for trying to meet the business needs for processing and working with an increased membership, increased provider base, and anything that we had to do to add regulatory issues for picking up those additional counties. So if you could move to the next slide, Greg. So with our recent expansion, we, we added probably about 30 to 40,000 extra providers in the Pima County area. Um, and unfortunately, part of the expansion plans included having to wait. I mean, once you've been notified that you received that contract base, you still have to wait until 10-1, your actual effective date, to make sure that everything is in place and you're ready to move forward. So we had a very short window to get a lot of work done and we were definitely looking for ways to improve our automation efforts. Part of that was adding new lines of business for our provider records files, updating the provider panels, adding additional supporting codes. We also have a series of processes that we use to suspend claims in certain situations that our claims department requires us to do, and we will also use automated processes to approve claims. So you can move to the next slide. Before Foxtrot, we were actually using Attachmate as a product, which is a scripting product, and you do have to have some base of programming knowledge to, to use it. And we had made a cutoff point that said, in your particular projects, if you are updating more than 200 records, we will find a way to automate it through Attachmate. If it was less than 200 records, you guys can manually address that, whether it was processing claims, adding provider records, whichever the case might be. In either instance, that work would be done by our provider network operations team or by the claims processing team. And uh, both pieces were, since they're manual, we then would have to do a lot of double checking to make sure that the work was done correctly. That those, and, and we actually have a very small P&O staff. We have two people that are actually updating our system. So whenever big projects come along, they don't have time because they're busy doing their regular job of maintaining the provider network and also addressing any claims backflow needs. So we would always have to monitor the work that was being done to make sure the provider's records were being updated correctly and that we had time to get it done within the frame that we were allowed. So we traditionally run, even today, about 15 macros a day, but we have a library of over 200 queries that we built over the last six years in order to address whatever the business need might be to get data either added to the system or updated within the system. Next slide, please. So we've not been using Foxtrot for very long, but we were up and running with it on a very quick basis, um, partly, I think, because of my experience building macros over the past few years, but also because it's a very simple product to use. And I think I actually had a live macro up and running pretty much the second day we had the product. So we're currently using it to update physician panel sizes to add new lines of business, which is the demo that we're going to view in a few minutes. We're using it to reprocess claims. We built a process that actually updates NDC codes. And we're also using it to approve claims when we just need to re-adjudicate them because there's a system glitch or we've updated something and we create a list of claims that just say, go reprocess them and approve them. So when you look at this particular slide, you'll see that the time that it's taken us in the past with our prior macro products, it would take us anywhere from seven to eight hours of somebody sitting and watching a macro run to get it to work. And now we've streamlined it through Foxtrot to get those processes down from anywhere from 12 hours down to one or two hours. Some of the processes are running in mere minutes. And we're ecstatic about the time savings and the fact that we do not have to have a person sitting and watching to make sure that the macro is running correctly because it's in that presentation layer and the data is going in quicker, more accurately. We have less things that are falling out and our fallout is actually a result 
of the fact that we are in Phoenix, Arizona, but our parent company and our um, Unix box is actually located in our California office. So sometimes we encounter some system delays that cause us problems, and it might cause a hiccup that will, will result in a record error. But it's so much cleaner with Foxtrot that we've had very few errors to have to work out of our processes that we're currently running. We, we're running at least three different projects right now that are big projects and getting the claims done in just a matter of maybe two hours instead of eight to 12 hours. And I just I love that cost shape, savings that we've gained just through people not having to work it. And the speed of getting 20 records done a minute where a person could not possibly process that fast. OK, we can go to the next slide. So as I just mentioned in the previous slide, we're able to get in, update records, get things done in minutes. We do not have to watch them in the way we had to with our prior processes. We have significant reductions in both the time and the errors that are coming out of the processes. And part of it is due, I should have mentioned also earlier, due to our core system that runs and requires data to be in certain fields. And so we've had to build those into the processes to make sure that we've given enough time for the system to run and be where it needs to be. So ironically enough, Foxtrot runs so fast that we've actually had to build in pieces to slow it down in order that our process can keep up with it. Um, I, I'm hoping to improve that over the course of time, that we do not have to continue to slow it down, but can actually run it full out and gain that extra time. So we've, we've had a very huge amount of business to get up and running. I didn't mention earlier that we did also get the Pima County, but we also have entered the marketplace arena and have gained these contract for the state of Arizona to process their marketplace claims, which also happened on October 1st. So in addition to any of the Pima County expansion, we're also dealing with adding seven new lines of business for our marketplace environment and getting those providers set up. So we've had a lot of growth in a very short period of time. And everything that we do is either Medicare or Medicaid. So we're all bound by the regulations of those two agencies to make sure that we're processing things accurately, timely, and getting the system set up correctly. And we definitely feel that this product is helping us do that. So I think we could probably move to the next slide. I'll let you give me just a minute here. <laughs> my screen lock just kicked in. I wasn't moving my cursor enough. I, apo I apologize for the delay. Well, that's OK. Um, and yeah, so the, for the next section, we're just going to actually go in and take a look at the product demo anyway. So um, what I'm going to do, we'll switch it over to your screen there. OK. Ivy, you'll get the little pop up. All right, ready when you are. All right. And uh, just to let everybody know, this is Justin uh, Calhoun, the Director of Sales Support here at EnableSoft. And uh, so for the next few moments, we're just going to take a look at the product itself. So uh, walk through the user interface and show you the technique that we use to interact with these uh, business systems. And then we're going to run through a uh, script that Ivy uh, was uh, so kind to share with us today. And we'll explain that in, in just a moment. So now that we can all see the screen here, let me go ahead and um, talk about Foxtrot 1 application. So at a very high level, Foxtrot 1 is an application that's going to be installed on a desktop. So, um, at, you know, and there you know, so this is a desktop automation application. So it's going to automate the processes through the presentation layer of your business system. Um, and that's what enables us to be able to build these scripts very quickly uh, when issues arise, uh, rather than having to wait for custom programming or you know maybe wait for your vendor to do an update. But Foxtrot gives you that ability to do it real time. Um, now, along with the green screen that we're going to be looking with at today, we can automate any application. So. Uh, you can think of that green screen as a web-based system, a Windows-based system, Excel. So it doesn't matter what type it is. Uh, we use the same technique 
to automate tasks within it. Um, and today's process is more of a, a data-driven process. So we're going to work with the source data file, and we're going to move that data from the file into our um, extra extreme emulator. However, it's not required to work with the source data to be able to use Foxtrot. So if there's maybe those workflow processes that you want to look at, copy and paste data from one app to another, or do some calculations during your processing, you can script those as well. But for today's example, we're using a data file. Now the technique that we use uh, to automate processes is a drag and drop technique. Our application does not require any programming, so there's no syntax involved, there's no coding to learn, it's all drag and drop. So as long as you're familiar with the process you're automating, you can quickly build it with Foxtrot 1. So speaking about the drag and drop, let's take a look at the interface here. Um, the application has uh, four sections. You have your file menu at the top here. It gives you access to all your controls and help documentation. And below that is our script center. And this is the, really the main workspace of the application. It has our selector tool, which is what we use to drag and drop onto the application. And it has our non-interactive actions list. As you can see, they're categorized um, as far as what they can help you automate. So we have a data section to help you transform data display to help you, um, you know, display actions and notes and everything, uh, file and folder management, workflow, uh, FTP, uh, which is a, a newer action features, um, and then different looping and so on. So to the right of that is our new task window. And you can see here we already have a script built that Ivy runs um, you know, for her daily processing. Um, and we're going to get into that in just a moment. But then the, over here on the right is a task panel. Help us organize our scripts in multiple sections if we need to. The view center is where we're going to view that source data, uh, that Excel file or CSV, you know, whatever file that has our data that we want to work with. We can view it down here. And there's some other views to choose from. So we have um, you know, the emulator view, so it helps us show our connections to emulators. And then the most common view is going to be our variables view. Variables is a very powerful feature where you can copy data from the screen and interrogate it, transform it, send it back to the screen, or just use it for other processes. And below the view center is our run center. So once we're ready to process um, our data, we just click the big run button to start the script. Some other run options and statistics. As we go through, we can monitor how fast it's going and then different rewind and then speed controls as well. Now, the drag and drop technique. We use our selector tool, and I'm not going to build a whole new script, but just to kind of show you, you know, we can drag and drop onto uh, the application we want to interact with, and then Foxtrot's going to look at the application and then display an action builder window, which then the user can select the action that uh, they want to use. So we have smart targeting technology, and this action list will change depending on the target you selected. So if it's a, an emulator screen like this, it will give you a little screenshot of, of the uh, emulator, but if it's a web page, it will change. If it's an Excel document, it will change again, because it's interrogating the system real time to figure out what type of system it is, you know, what type of screen it is, what type of field it is, and then present the user with what we can do with it. Um, which eliminates all the guesswork out when you're trying to figure out what all of the capabilities of this program. And then the user would just select the actions that they would use and then follow along to enter the data and so on. So it's that simple to build a, uh, you know, an action, you just drag and drop, pick on what you want to do. So we use that same technique, of course, to go through and build this script today that we're going to run. And I'll just scroll down through here so you can take a look at all the different actions. We have the send data, uh, different if statements to help us incorporate logic into our script so we decision on our data uh, as it's And as we scroll through here, you'll see there's an else statement in here, which uh, goes along with the if statement, different looping mechanisms to help us loop through uh, information and so on.
I know there's a little bit of delay there from the GoToMeeting, so I'm not going to scroll through everything. But then, Ivy, if you wouldn't mind, before I hit the Run button, could you just take a second and describe exactly what this script is doing for you? Yes, I can. Um, basically what this is is a list of provider records in our system that need to be updated and have new line of business add. My input file could have anywhere from one new line of business up to five new lines of business that could be added per provider. So some of the logic within this process is also looking at how many records I'm going to scroll real quick here in my um, options section or my data section just to show, let's see if I can move this over a little that I do have multiple lines of business, especially here in the first record, I have three out of my five lines of business that I'm going to be loading to this record. And it could range anywhere, as I mentioned, from one to five. So it's determining how many I need to load, and then it's actually adding, as you look at my um, attachment window, you'll see it's actually going to fill in the line of business. It's going to fill in some panel information about whether the physician is a primary or a specialist, uh, what their panel size is, do they have any gender or age maxes, and then it actually goes to the line of business screen and adds contract information um, in my test environment. So that's basically what it's doing. It's going to swing through only 15 provider records, but it will add about 50 lines of business in that window. Fantastic. And uh, so I appreciate that description. So if you like, without further ado, why don't you go ahead and hit the run button and we'll start the process. Do you want to run it through slow first to step through it before we speed it up? Sure. Or just run it full out. So as Justin said earlier, we've got a dial that you can control the speed of the macro. And we've noticed, or sorry, the process that we've noticed that if you run it just one under, it's a very nice quick stepping process. And you can watch it as it runs. You can verify it. It's very easy to troubleshoot as you're watching it. So you can see oh. right now it's adding and filling in the blanks. My process okay. also, in addition to adding the information here, is creating files at the end that will actually do validation files to make sure that my records were added correctly. Fantastic. Now keep in mind, the emulator is actually viewing um, the data being entered as it's manually being entered. So all the authentication is still there. All the audit trails uh, that your system may provide is still intact. Your user profile is being used to enter the data, so it shows that you know Ivy's um, you know making the updates today. <clears throat> and what most folks like about that is the data validation that their system provides. So as we enter in data real time, we'll get feedback from the system if it's the right format or if that maybe that code does not exist anymore. Then we can incorporate that logic to maybe mark that record as an, as having an error. And then we'll go through and look at our exception file at the end to go back and review those um, errored out accounts. The other thing you can do is you can also use information on the screens to pull into the process and say, oh, if I see this in this position, then I know I need to do the following. So it's a, it's a lovely piece that you can incorporate. For instance, I have an active flag here in item number three. If that happens, I can actually read the screen to determine if that is an A or an I, and then I can change my logic based on that. I think we're just about through the first record. And then we can turn it up to max and let it run. But you have to watch real fast because it runs very quickly. So now I'm also adding comments to my record to make sure that it's noted that I've made those changes. And I'm going to speed it up to max. Oh, it only ran one record. Sorry. Yeah, we only had we'll go ahead one. And start it. Yeah, we'll start it from the top again. And do I need to change? I think let's run it until it's done. We've already marked the first record as being completed, so it will automatically go to the second record. Well, you have it on repeat once there, Ivy. Oh, is that what right. I did? Yeah, it's OK. It'll, it'll run the one real, uh, real fast there. And then it'll stop. OK, yeah. so, so it did. <laughs> so I need to change this to? Yeah, it to drop down and do records, yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. So it'll take care of everything that's in the file. Sorry, I said I was new. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see, when you put it on max speed, you know the application really dedicates all of the system resources to processing. So the the pages will not update uh, as far as what action it's on, 
I won't display the data and anything. So we just kind of focus on the processing behind the scenes, if you will. And, and I've built in. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say there's some built-in timing in here, so we can um, we know about the host connection, and we know that it's if it's ready to accept data, and it'll continue on. So there's that real-time um, conversation that's going on between the two apps. And I've noticed that as I run it, and I think some of it depends upon how many people are on our system, but the, the process actually speeds up as I run it. So I think, again, it's looking at how it can get faster and improve performance as it runs. Yeah, that's one thing with our technology, you know, since it's having that conversation, you know, each each time, you know, the timing may not be the same because what if there are, you know, having a slow connectivity day, or something like that, um, you know, the, the script will adjust accordingly. And our system definitely slows down the more users you have on. So yeah. we, we kind of caught it probably at a good time with people at lunch here in, in Arizona. But the fact that I can update 50 records in about a minute is pretty phenomenal. It's done, it's done this to 15 records. And Great. I've also written out, I think I wrote it out to my, uh, I have a folder here if you want to see that I did write out during the process to a status file. Actually, I had two status files that were part of this process. And they would have created a successful file showing that all my records were added successfully. And this is actually from another process that's showing the actual detail of everything that was loaded during that process. So if I need to do any data validation, I've already got my file built to do that as part of my the whole process. Yeah, and that's very powerful. And, yeah, <laughs> and uh, very powerful and you know a lot of different things you can do with it. It's very flexible and, and uh, Ivy, we certainly appreciate you, sh you know, sharing your, your project and your experience. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and um, turn it back over to uh, Greg for the moment and we'll bring back on our screen. Um, eventually here. This will pop over. Okay, here we go. Okay, thank you Justin and Ivy for that presentation. Ordinarily this would be the Q&A portion of our program, but uh, we're running a little long, so we're going to answer any questions that have been asked today, and I can see there's been a few uh, via email, again, within 24 hours after today's event. So what do we do now? Well, there's really three steps we'd like each of you to take here after we exit this webinar today. That first one is to contact us for a proof of concept. Now that's our opportunity to prove the power of our Foxtrot technology and our digital employees before you buy it. We install uh, Foxtrot in your environment, in your application, on your system, and solve a real data challenge that you're struggling with, again, to be able to prove the power of Foxtrot. And that's our opportunity to show you uh, in your environment how Foxtrot can really save you time and money today. Second is to download this presentation. It's on its way. Um, you'll, you'll each receive a thank you email thanking you for attending today. Inside that email will be a link to this presentation. I encourage each of you to download that. And then three is to share this information. Share that, that downloaded presentation with everyone in operations, IT. Every department has uh, certainly some application or someone that can benefit from Foxtrot One. If you'd like to contact us directly, we encourage you to do so. We can be reached at 1-800-215-9397, or of course you can reach us on the internet on our website or via email. And again, we'd like to thank everybody for attending today. We really, really appreciate it. We know your time is valuable. Uh, before we leave you today, we will share a quote uh, from Henry Ford, who is not in healthcare but knew something about efficiency, and he says, if you need a solution and don't buy it, then ultimately you'll find that you have paid for it and don't own it. And certainly that's very true, and that applies when we're talking about Foxtrot One. So, uh, again, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Have a great rest of the afternoon, and we hope to hear from you soon. Bye-bye.